Coming up at 11, the brand new program that will give you new ideas on creatively updating your home with the latest technologies for your Hill Country home and expert service from Ballroom Bass and Home Designs. But now it's time for a special broadcast from host Stacey Almaguer with the Unicorn Power Hour. The following is sponsored by Hill Country Family Services, and this is Bernie Radio, 103.9 FM. Good morning, Bernie. This is Stacy Almaguer, the CEO of Hill Country Family Services, and today is your power hour. We are so excited to be in my favorite restaurant in Leon Springs, and it is Albie's Vitae. So we have a very exciting guest today. I have to say that I spend a lot of time with my backside at the bar eating three meatballs while watching sports games when my family doesn't know where I am. And so it's a little dirty secret that now is public information. And so if you ever want to catch me on a Saturday afternoon, that's probably where I am. But I want to take a moment to introduce you to Albie. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Fantastic. You know what, Albie? I started coming here to your restaurant because friends of mine invited me. So as we were talking before the show started, you were talking about how people find you because of word of mouth. So if you don't know where this amazing place is, it is tucked in the corner by HEB in Leon Springs. And so some people might drive by and say, gosh, that place has been eight different names and maybe I don't really want to go there. Let me tell you, you want to come here. Not only for the meatballs, but I hear there are other things amazing on the menu as well. But Albie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your restaurant. Tell us about why you decided this ever-changing location was part of where you wanted to be and and get started. We'd love to hear from you. Of course. Thank you for having me, Stacey. Mm -hmm. A little history about the restaurant and Bisvita, its origins. We started in 2020 during COVID. That's when I was in school in Austin, at UT Austin. And my mother was working at UT Health Science Center. She was doing chromosome 18 research. And we've always had a passion for cooking. I was born in Albania next to, it's across the sea from Italy. Came here in 2007. And we've always had a passion for cooking, but we had been doing other things when, while in America. And when COVID hit, I came to San Antonio to do online schooling. And my mother and I were like, oh, let's go get some food. Let's go eat at that place you used to work at when you were in high school. And when we went over there, it was completely dead and it looked like the owner was struggling a little bit due to the circumstances. And the food was still delicious, of course. So we went home and we ate it and we were talking and we were talking. And we said, hey, why don't we make an offer? Why don't we make an offer? Oh, yeah. I wonder how many people did that during COVID. Suddenly you have so much time on your hands and you're like, why don't we go open a restaurant? I'd say that most people would say that might not be... I don't know. A lot of people were struggling with finances during that time. And so I don't, if you had the investment, then that might have been a fantastic. I just think, oh, my gosh, how many hundreds of people I met who were losing everything during COVID by it when it was low. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was scary, but we made the offer. And it, when it got accepted, we <laughs> just imagine opening a restaurant where half of the restaurant can't even be utilized in seating. Most of it has to be to, to go. Yeah. Nobody knows who we are. So it wasn't necessarily an easy investment, but I remember being in the office in the restaurant doing on a Zoom meeting for my college class and then saying, okay, I'll be right back and then going refilling some waters. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is awesome. You're an entrepreneur. You've created this amazing environment. I see everybody I know here. It's almost if you come to a restaurant and people that you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable and confident that you've chosen the right place. A lot of it has to do with your staff as well. And so that's really what the Power Hour is all about, is that we really take hard conversations and bring them to light about what it's like to, to be a citizen right now, what it's like to deal with some of the mental and behavioral health issues in the community, especially after COVID. We really saw that up in Bernie, we lack a lot of community resources. And so we try to bring our community ways in which they can receive help and assistance when it comes to that. But when I think about people that are working in restaurants and dealing with attitudes, and that's a very special breed of people who can take on others during challenging times. So tell me about how, as a business owner, an entrepreneur, you help your staff when it comes to feeling secure in the workplace, feeling like they can ask you for help when it's needed. Yeah, that's a super important topic. And the biggest thing that we've done here is we empower the employees. Everybody here 
from the dishwasher to the busboy to the manager knows that they have a voice and that it's taken very seriously. So when something comes up and they let me know, we work together as a team to make sure it's resolved or we have the best possible solution. And we treat each other with extreme kindness. And I've told people, hey, listen, I don't mind if things go a little bit slower, but they work a little bit more with respect. And it, it shows. The people here, when they clock in, they're happy. And when they leave, they're happy, maybe even happier. And that's very important to me. And that's very important to the mission that we're trying to create here. I love that. And you know what? As a customer here, I see that. So I was here, as I mentioned earlier, on Saturday, sitting at the bar, eating my meatballs and hiding from my family. But I saw this guy walk up to you and he said, hey, Albie, can I talk to you for a minute? And you took him out here out and I'm pointing and of course everybody on the radio can see exactly where I'm pointing to right now but they have this amazing outdoor seating area and I wasn't trying to be up in your business but I was just curious I was wondering I wonder if that person is complaining I wonder if that person is ratting out an employee but you both came back happy and I don't know I felt really inspired because I thought I don't know what you guys were talking about but number one you gave that person your attention. So that was huge. And as a CEO of an organization, I I have failed at that before where I try to talk to people in front of other people and that never goes well. And then, so you gave him privacy, you gave him space, you gave him a voice and you weren't rushing him. And I don't know what on earth he was talking to you about. He could have been talking to you about buying a new car. I don't care. And I don't know, but you can sense that you were present for him. And that's really important. Yeah, that is very important. And moments like that, I try to allow myself to give my full attention and my full time, like you mentioned. And that feeling of giving someone your complete and utmost attention allows them to speak freely and with confidence that you'll actually take them seriously. And that's that's why a lot of my staff have been here since day one, and they, wow. don't, they don't plan on leaving. So this one here in Leon Springs has only been here for a year. Yeah, we purchased this one in January of 23. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> this is getting better. So everyone listening, you've got two locations. Do they have similar menus? <laughs> yep. Can I go get my meatballs down somewhere else? You can get your meatballs over there. <laughs> It's the cheese, guys. It's the meatballs. And then when they come out and you want to eat them, you'll burn your mouth off because they literally, these, it's almost like I just imagine this little grandma back there somewhere and she's making these meatballs and they are to die for. And then somebody along the line puts this cheese on the top and you will scald your mouth off. But, But if you leave it alone for just a minute or two, It gets a little harder and, oh my gosh, (laughs) life-changing. Have I encouraged everybody to come get the meatballs? And then in addition to that, they serve you these fluffy, amazing bread with garlic on the top. Oh my God. Yeah. Everything that you just mentioned is homemade. Oh, yeah. If you guys are hearing noises in the background, that's them making those meatballs. (laughs) Oh, yes. Because Albie offered to feed us and I was like, no, we're going somewhere else for lunch. But I'm so regretful. But anyway, (laughs) back to the topic, which is why you need to get in your car and come down here because what we've heard is that the food is phenomenal and then more importantly this is a place that makes food from scratch where do you get your recipes yep so it's my mama my grandma family recipes my cousin they have restaurants in new Braunfels, texas oh wow yep. so you've got a whole restaurant thing in your family yeah we have four as a family whoa that's amazing it's like a conglomerate you guys should be on the nasdaq or something <laughs> that's, that's just amazing so what are your thoughts for the future do you want more restaurants To be honest, 2024 this year, I'm all about the community. Okay. Uh, My goal is to get to know the people in Leon Springs, Bernie, everywhere around here, and just make these connections, and then I'll see what the future holds for me. What do you want them to know? I just, uh, many things, but the first thing I want them to know is that there is a spot here in Leon Springs, a neighborhood spot, and I love the fact that you said you can come here and see familiar faces and see your friends. That's exactly what I'm trying to build. I love the idea of being able to have a location where people are laughing, having a good time. There's never stress. They know who the staff is because it never changes. And that brings me a lot of joy. And so if I do open up another place, it will likely be here in this local area because 
I just, I love the community here so much. Thank you. Because we've lived here 17 years. And I have to say that I've always searched for that local place. And we had a place here in Leon Springs and unfortunately it burned down. And it was really catastrophic because we didn't have anywhere to go. And so for a couple of years, we were driving up to Kerrville. And I won't name out the restaurant by name because that's not appropriate. But what I will do, I will tell you this. We used to go every Friday night. My husband and I, we have a ranch and hunt. And so it made sense for us to go up there because eventually we'll be building a house there. We thought we want to build a community. The whole purpose of what you just said. And back to the mental health part, people want that cheers experience. You want people to, you want to be able to walk in and have somebody recognize you, right? And so we went for about two and a half years every Friday night to this place. And every single time, it was the first time we had ever been. They didn't pretend like they knew us. And I'm not a famous person. It's not like I'm like, ooh, so-and-so's here. That's not it. I wanted someone to look me in the eye and pretend like they had seen me before. And I calculated we had spent about $3,000, which is material in my world. And I'm like, I told my husband, that's it. We're not coming here anymore because Torchy's Tacos knows my order when I, the, the, the bartender at Torchy's Tacos knows my order when I walk in and their tacos are $3.85. I come up here and I spend over $100 every Friday night and nobody knows who I am. And it made me feel bad. You know, I mean, it, it made me feel like I was faceless, nameless, and irrelevant. And so any organization that can take the slightest effort to get to know who you are is a winner. And that's what you do here at Albie's Vitae. Yeah, we prioritize that. Our goal is on your second visit, we know you. I also like that my credit card and my cell phone are somehow all tied together and I get texts from you. Oh yeah. Sometimes we send out those texts and I don't just say hi. I get you free stuff. Meatballs, maybe. Oh, hey, I'm off of that. It's not even a, I, I, I don't care about that. I think that most people, you're motivated by different things. Money, stuff doesn't motivate me. That emotional, social emotional part that I, I see you, you're important, you have value. That is what builds a community. And so that's really cool. Something that I hope that those within our community who want to feel that way, want to feel valued, want to feel like they're stopping in somewhere and they make a difference. And on Thursday nights, I just learned Stan Wayne has live music. I've been taking this class on Thursday nights, and so I hope it's over soon so I can come. Stan Wayne's my favorite. Oh my gosh. I'll, I'll make up a hypothetical situation here. Say one of your staff members comes, and they're really, they're, they're having a hard time. What would be the process here? Because we've had dozens, probably not that many, because we've only done the power hour for what, like a year and a half now, but a lot of people as guests on our show, and we really dive into how it, how business and mental health relate. Somebody came to you and said, Albie, life is so hard right now. What would be your process of helping them as their employer? What would be the the way that you would approach it? How would you be protective of their job? How do people feel comfortable here? Yeah, of course, things happen. And a situation like that has happened here before, naturally. I think the first step is just to have a private space to talk and then tell them however comfortable you feel however many things you want to tell me because maybe you don't want to tell me the full story but whatever you would like to tell me I'd love to hear it and um, not only would I give my uh, advice but I'd give some viable options for them and those include maybe taking some time off without any sort of repercussion Mm -hmm. or um, I've even uh, created a whole new schedule for them that works for whatever purpose they need it so I had some people that could only work Saturday nights and they know they felt so bad because what about the Tuesday lunch I can't work anymore and I said don't worry about it because uh, Saturday night you know that's when the servers might make the most money sure and and they felt bad about it because uh, they didn't want to take someone else's shift but I understood how important it was and so sometimes you have to make those calls um, to allow people to not feel bad because of the choices they have to make their life yeah prioritize, yeah, prioritize their life. Exactly. It's hard now. I just, back, my parents were visiting from the Midwest this past weekend, and we were talking about how once upon a time, you had a job for your whole career. Like, you're, you're a farmer forever. You're a pharmacist forever. Now, you, and this is statistically relevant information that came from a friend of mine who teaches at Texas A&M, a student 
first year student at Texas A&M is told you will more than likely have 11 careers, not jobs, but 11 major pivots in your life. And so I think that we we're building this generation of people who don't even stay very long where they go. And so I think that having an opportunity to really grow wherever you choose to be, I think we're a little bit more discriminating with if we're not getting the flexibility where we're at, then we're moving on because we know that other things are available. But more importantly, I think that people are expecting that. They're expecting that grace. They're expecting that opportunity. And then I want to make sure this thought doesn't leave my head because this is very important to me because I'm a mother. I've got four kids. My youngest has decided to go into the probably (laughs) the hardest career on earth, which is he wants to be a chef. Mm. He's on his way to the Culinary Institute of America in St. Helena, California. And as we did um, research on what it's like to be the mother of a chef, I was really concerned. Mental health depression is that becoming a chef that is the highest rates of mental health issues depression anxiety and it's also the highest rates of drug and alcohol abuse so you are in this space where you've got people who because maybe it's the stress of the job you're working with people and people are working for you who are already predisposed to some of these really hard things yeah let me tell you something about that that kind of hits deep for me it's for the chef comment because before I owned a restaurant, I worked in restaurants and I saw a lot of mistreatment to the kitchen staff by, by owners because the owners just want food to come out. Yeah. Hey, get, make the food come out hot and delicious. I don't care about your life, basically. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a job. Huh? And when I got this restaurant, me and my chef, he's so close to me. We're very close. And I actually was a little bit late to this current interview because I was having a chat with him. And I did not want to cut him off. And it's just very important to me that they feel heard because the chef business and the back of house business is a very tough one they work very hard, especially when it's scratch right we don't have a microwave so that means he has to plan and think and so my and meatballs are, are not microwave back there <laughs> no they're not <laughs> i've always wondered how you got the cheese not to be hard and <laughs> inedible but sorry to cut you off <laughs> yeah but so that's super important and then another thing is what what i like to do is i want to make to make sure that the staff knows whatever direction they take. If they leave me because they have an amazing opportunity somewhere else, I am always so happy for them and so proud of them. And I tell them, listen, you come in here when you have a lunch time and I want to have a chat with you and I'll buy your lunch. I never make people feel like they can't leave me and I'll be in a bad mood because of it. I, you know what? You are my spirit animal because I tell my staff that all the time. I actually take I run a nonprofit organization. It's hard. We meet people on the worst days of their lives. Hill Country Family Services is an organization that you are going to because things are not okay. And sometimes for our staff, they take that home. They take it personally. Sometimes people aren't very nice to them because they're not getting what they think they need or want from us when we've had to refer them out. And I try so hard to be mindful of that. I give exorbitant amounts of vacation. I give a lot of mental health support. I try so hard with my own staff. But what I do, what sounds like what you do, and I have never heard anybody else say this before, so this is the greatest thing to have this in common. I take them opportunities. I tell them all the time, hey, the Kendall County Women's Shelter is hiring and this would be the perfect job for you. Or we recently, a couple of us on our staff participated in the Bernie ISD Community Leadership Academy. And they said anyone who works here can they can help them achieve their teaching certificate. And I went to one of our staff members who was in that academy with me and I said, I have always thought you would be such a good teacher. Why don't you follow this? See where this ends up. But then be happy for them if they choose to leave you and go and follow their passions or their dreams or find that Michelin-rated restaurant to go work at. I think if we treated our staff like that, with more than humanely it's like you you're building their confidence you're building their their ability to think beyond themselves i just think that's really incredible another reason to come down here to albe's vitae to enjoy everything that's on the menu so tell us a little bit about the happy hour that's available monday through friday i might be famous for coming for the pizza as well although i just told baron that i wasn't eating (laughs) things i wasn't supposed to but i guess i lied because i do know so you have this unbelievably cool video you're always posting videos on social media yeah of course the happy hour menu is six dollar cocktails five dollar wine ten dollar pizzas 
Everybody loves it. We do three to six, Tuesday through Friday. We are closed Mondays, but Tuesday through Friday, three to six. And you can sit anywhere. You can sit in the bar, the dining room, the patio, wherever you like, and enjoy these happy hour specials. And then, like I, like we said, on Thursdays, as soon Stan as you finish Wayne. that happy hour, you get out there and start dancing with Stan Wayne. <laughs> Terry from The Grill at Leon Springs, he is one of my mentors, and he's taught me a lot. And that one, he called me before I opened this place. I called him, actually. And he expressed to me how important it is to have a menu, a happy hour menu that doesn't make people feel like you're cheating them but makes them actually enjoy it and so that's how I built my happy hour menu to make people say wow that's awesome that's fun so you've learned well from your mentor because he had hundreds and hundreds of people that would go there for happy hour all week long it was like the place to be so come on down and join me any um, Saturday afternoon when I I feel like I'm dead I'm beating a dead horse here telling everybody where I am on Saturdays (laughs) but this is amazing and so for anybody who can't imagine in their mind exactly where you are. Tell us physically what your address is, your website, where people can go online and decide what they want in advance because then they'll order more, and then where to tell their people to come to meet them because this is such a great place. Of course. Our website is albisvita.com. Vita means grapevine in Italian, by the way. Ooh. It's Albi's grapevine. And then our address is 24165 West I-10, San Antonio, Texas. We're right here next to the H-E-B in Leon Springs. We're connected to it on Bernie Stage Road and the I-10. You might get lost because they have changed this. We've lived here 17 years. So this place has been lots and lots of things. So just for clarification, you go from Albies VT, you walk next door, you get your pool supplies, you go next door, you get your nails done, then you hit HEB. It's not in the corner with the orthodontist. It's on the opposite side. So just so you, it's not on the victory side. It's not on the Papo Nacho side. So don't be driving around the parking lot getting irritated because you can't figure out where you are. But Albie, thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being so inspirational for our community and really making mental health a priority for yourself, your family, your business. Thank you for taking the needs of the individuals who work for you into consideration. Because at this time in our our world, I just feel like people need that. They need it more than ever. Our young people need that more than ever. And the fact that you have created this environment that can inspire others is really important. And we want this to be the place on the week nights. We want to hang out with Stan Wayne, and I want to see everybody here on Saturday afternoons. About 3 o'clock is pretty much when I cruise through. <laughs> Anything else you want to share? I just want to say thank you so much, and amazing that you have this platform. I'm very, very love it. I love it. I love it, too. If you get to know Baron and Shan at Bernie Radio, it's amazing. All the things that you didn't even know you could do suddenly become a part of your shtick. We've created this to to really bring light to mental and behavioral health, bring light to our Bernie community and the surrounding areas, and then to meet new friends. So thanks so much. We really appreciate it. If you want to get more, to know more about Hill Country, Country Family Services, that, again, is Hill Country Family Services. Come and visit us anytime, 114 Advoat Street in Bernie, and you can find us at hcfstx.org. Thanks so much. Have an amazing Saturday, everyone.